This video is sponsored by Magellan TV. In the summer of 1914, German top brass ordered a full frontal assault on a Soviet fortress located in northeastern Poland. Germany saw Russia as a significant threat to their rising power, and the Soviet fortress remained one of their main obstacles to their advancement into Russian territory. Three times the Germans tried to gain control of the fortress, and three times they failed. The fourth time, though, was different. Germany sent no less than 14 battalions of infantry, sappers, siege guns, and artillery for the last attack on the fortification. However, unlike previous assaults on the fortress, they had a new weapon that would make all the difference. Chlorine gas. The Russians had only a thousand men defending the fort, and less than half of them were conscripted militiamen. At four o'clock on August 4th, a dark green cloud of a chlorine and bromine mixture floated towards the Russians positioned at the fort's front. When the gas combined with the water in the air and their lungs, the substance turned the chlorine into hydrochloric acid, and the Russians began to dissolve from the inside out. Because the soldiers had either no mask or only a rudimentary version of one, the comrades had little to no protection when the fumes arrived at the fort. When the Germans triumphantly strutted over to the defense barrier and began to march toward the inner fortifications, they were met by a gruesome sight that would haunt their dreams forever. Instead of surrendering to the assault, the agonizing Russians decided to counterattack and fight for their country until their very last breaths. And thus ensued a terrible, gory battle, where roughly a hundred Russians charged the 7,000 German soldiers with their bayonets. The Germans turned and ran away, terrified at the horde of melted-faced, zombie-like men charging through the darkness and attacking mercilessly. This is the dire tale of the brave Russian soldiers who fought for their country, despite being outnumbered and experiencing unimaginable physical pain. It's also a great reminder of why chemical warfare is banned all over the world. The attack of the dead men may have seemed like the end of the world on the Eastern Front. Learn more about how the conflict began and what would come after in the Magellan TV documentary series Doomsday World War I. Featuring rare archival footage restored and in color, Doomsday World War I tells the story of the Great War, from the political fractures that sparked the conflict to the survivors who had become the most important leaders in World War II. Dark Docs viewers can now take advantage of an exclusive offer, 30% off an annual membership. Visit try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs or click the link in the description below to get this special offer, which is also available to returning members who have a lapsed membership. Magellan TV is a streaming service that features some of the most incredible documentary and history content available anywhere, with new programs added on a weekly basis. Check out the documentaries and series in the War and Military playlist, streaming with no ads and without interruption. Support Dark Docs, and check out Magellan TV's over 3,000 documentaries with your one-month free trial. Click on the link in the description below or visit try.magellantv.com slash darkdocs today. The Soviet Fortress When talking about the Great War, pictures of the endless and bloody trenches on the Western Front come into mind. However, most heavy-duty fighting actually took place on the Eastern Front, between Russia and Germany. Built in the late 19th century by the Romanov dynasty, the Soviet Fortress is located in what is now northeastern Poland. Constructed as a defensive structure between Russia and Germany's borders, the fortress was continuously updated by the government to cope with advances in heavy siege gunnery. The destruction of this fortification was crucial for the Germans, who saw Russia as a significant threat to their rising power. The fortress hindered their advancement into Russian territory and forced capable German soldiers to loom in the area instead of engaging on active battlefields. The fortress was defended by layers of intricate protection. In the vicinity of the structure, two defensive lines were ready to stop an enemy attack before it came close to the border. The first line of defense consisted of a shallow trench network with barbed wire at the front. Should the first line fall, the second had deeper trenches, more steel fencing wire, and space for machine gun nests. If the enemy force made it through these first two layers, they would face tall walls and battlements protecting the fort. There, the enemy would be an easy target for the Russian soldiers, who could shoot from a safe position. Should the attackers make it inside a Soviet fortress, the Russians would engage them in close quarters combat. Because of this layered defense system, only a few Russian soldiers were necessary inside the fort. The Attacks a Soviet fortress was the target of several attacks from the Germans during the early stages of World War I when it was being defended by its Russian garrison. 
The first assault took place in September 1914, as the German 9th Army hit the area with no less than 40 infantry battalions consisting of 10,000 soldiers, outnumbering the defending Russians. A massive attack ensued, but the Germans were successfully repelled by Russian artillery. Not known for being quitters, the Germans tried another frontal assault in February 1915. Outnumbering the Russians once again, the heavy fighting lasted for almost a week, and the Germans were able to break down the first defensive line of the fortress. The Russians had no choice but to fall back, as the defense system's second line also came under attack. However, the enemy withdrew after a couple of days. On February 13th, the Germans came back with their newest heavy artillery and attacked the fortress mercilessly. According to witnesses, 360 shells hit the fort every four to five minutes for an entire week. When the bombardment was over, more than a quarter of a million shells from German heavy siege cannons and over a million shells of lighter artillery laid on the fortress's ground. The defending Russians suffered heavy losses from the artillery, and plenty of the buildings inside the fortress collapsed. Yet the Kaiser's forces could still not break through the Russian structure. It was almost as if breaking into Oshoviet's fortress was impossible. Little did the confident Russians know, the fortress's goriest battle was yet to come. A new weapon. In the middle of the summer, the Germans began to plan a new attack on Oshoviet's fortress. And although they only had 14 battalions available for battle, this time they were planning to introduce a new technique, chemical warfare. The German field leader, Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg, knew that the Russians' gas masks were rather rudimentary and would not resist contact with acidic gases. Thus, Marshal von Hindenburg ordered 30 gas batteries, consisting of several thousand deadly chlorine gas cylinders. Human contact with this substance is highly poisonous. Once it mixes with the skin, it transforms into hydrochloric acid and eats away the flesh fast. The only way to survive this substance is by flushing it out as fast as possible and hoping the wounds aren't as deep. As the Germans prepared for the upcoming assault, they waited for the perfect weather to launch their newest weapon on the 500 Russian soldiers and 400 militiamen defending the Oshoviets fortress. Finally, on the afternoon of August 6th, the Germans launched their 30 canisters of chlorine gas at the fort. The Attack of the Dead Men. The academic article Dead Men Attack, penned by A. Cherkasov, A. Ryabstev, and B. Merchkovsky from the Sochi State University, detailed the deadly fog spread. Quote, at four o'clock, Germans brought down artillery fire on all the targets and at the same time fired the gases. Dark green smog of chlorine and bromine mixture moved towards Russian positions and in five to ten minutes veiled them. The emitted gas wave of three kilometers wide reached eight kilometers width and 20 kilometers depth. All alive died in this death zone. The leaves on the trees turned yellow, curled up, and fell off. The grass turned black and fell to the ground. A deep green layer of chlorine oxide settled on all copper items, guns, and shell parts, washstands, and tanks. All the men outside of a Soviet fortress died quickly as the gas entered their bodies and dissolved their entire respiratory system. The men within the first line of defense watched as their esteemed comrades perished as they struggled to put on their rudimentary gas masks, but their efforts were useless against this powerful weapon. The deadly gas continued to spread into the fort. The Russian defenders began to inhale the toxins at a lower concentration than their outside comrades, thus taking longer to perish. As the men struggled to breathe, the Germans put on their gas masks and began to attack the defense line, reaching for the fortress. As all this was happening, Around a hundred wounded Russian soldiers, led by Sub-Lieutenant Vladimir Karpovich Kotlinsky, quickly planned a counterattack. If they were going to die, they would fight for their country until their last breath. When the Germans made it over the defense barrier and began to march towards the inner fortifications, they were met by a gruesome sight that would haunt their dreams forever. Although significantly outnumbered by the Germans, the Russians, with blood-soaked rags wrapped around their faces like some sort of bleeding mummies, and with others coughing up a storm, charged the attackers with their bayonets, shouting at the top of what was left of their lungs. The Germans attempted to fire at the soldiers, who looked like zombies wearing urine-soaked rags. Still, the enraged Russians attacked their enemies with such ferocity that nothing could stop them, not even their own deaths. Startled by the attack's unexpectedness and terrified by the gory spectacle and the Russians' never-ending willingness to fight, the German forces began to retreat from the fort. Three German regiments flocked back, running as fast as they could, trampling all the others. 
Some men were so terrified that they dropped their rifles and machine guns on the ground and ran away, leaving them behind in a panic. Some Germans got caught in the barbed wire entanglement of the second layer trench line as they ran out, and many of them perished from Russian batteries' shrapnel. By 11 o'clock that night, the nightmare was over. Thanks to Kurtlinski's counterattack, two more Russian companies were able to run to the fort and retake it before the Germans could regroup and enter once again. In this initiative, known as the Attack of the Dead Men, 100 brave Russian soldiers staved off the 7,000 German soldiers as they attempted to overtake the fort. Dead Men Surrender Later that evening, Lieutenant Kotlinski and many other soldiers succumbed to their wounds. A Soviet fortress served as a fierce protection structure for a few more days, but on August 22nd, the Russians defending the fort surrendered and marched out peacefully, not before demolishing the main walls and fortified points. The Russian forces were able to hold on long enough for Tsar Nicholas's forces to regroup and form a new defensive plan. In the spring of 1915, German soldiers broke through the Russian front in East Prussia and Galicia. The fortress and Russia, specifically their monarchy, were doomed. Despite this, the brave counterattack led by Kutlinski prevented the fortress from falling into the Germans' hands and saved thousands of its garrison from disaster. Only a hundred of the Russians survived this deadly and vicious battle. Had it not been for Kutlinski's efficient leadership, history would tell a different story of the dead men's attack. Horrific battles, like the attack of the dead men, prompted 38 countries to sign the Geneva Protocol in 1925, which prohibits using chemical weapons in war. Since then, 137 nations have ratified or joined the treaty.